As the ISS travels from horizon to horizon, the effects of Doppler come into play. In the briefing number four video, I introduced the main tracking control screen displayed in Nova, including the Doppler calculation window. During an ARIS contact, it's our responsibility to adjust both receive and transmit frequencies. The astronaut uses 145.800 MHz transmit and a confidential receive frequency which is passed along to the ARIS ground team before the event. From the observer point of view, you can see how the frequency change starts at about plus 3 kHz. Echo 3, Delta Charlie. This is November Alpha 1, Sierra, Sierra. Hey, Aiden. I adjust my receiver, in this case to the 145.803 MHz memory position. I decided to be an explorer, I decided to be a scientist, I decided to be a, a person who would know more about the world. As the ISS passes overhead, I use the Doppler calculation displayed in the window as a reference to when to change to the next memory position in one kilohertz steps. become a reliable person who can make decisions. Space we float because we are in free fall. The space station is going around the world like a satellite, a bit like the moon around the Earth. It is going forward so fast that it falls along the curve of the Earth and we are inside it falling at the same speed so to us it looks like we're floating but really we are falling we're all falling together but we're going forward so fast that the curve of our fall matches the curve of the earth and that's what it means to be on orbit over let's look at the ts2000 to see how we accomplish the task of frequency adjustment turn the radio on by momentarily pressing the power button we need to be in the memory mode, so push the VFO slash M button to be sure. You'll see a memory channel number appear, and the display will show the frequencies and channel name. This example starts with memory channel 80. Here is a table of channel numbers, their names, and the frequencies. The memory channels change in 1 kHz steps. I'm using the split mode of the TS-2000, which allows the use of the dual VFO capabilities of the radio. Notice, I have doubled the beginning and ending frequency pair. And, I have included the text STOP in the channel names at the beginning and end of the list. To change the memory channels, Turn the multi-channel knob to the right by one detent position. Notice how the receive frequency in the main window changes. The frequency in the sub-window also changes, indicating our transmit frequency. Near the end of the pass, we will be on memory number 87, the last of the frequency pairs. If we get a bit excited and don't stop for some reason, I have memory channel 88 programmed with the text STOP to keep the radio on frequency at the end of the contact. That's it, the contact is over. Congratulations. Let's review the operation during an ARIS contact. The tracking software Nova displays the until time, and as we get to about 30 seconds before AOS, the squelch control is turned counterclockwise to open the receiver. The control operator will listen, then begin to call the ISS.
As the contact continues, the memory channels are stepped through to adjust for Doppler. One important note here, change the memory channel during receive, never during transmit. The students will ask their questions, the control operator will use the PTT button on the microphone, and the TS-2000 memory channels will accommodate for Doppler. It's an exciting time for everyone, so it's very important for the radio operator to know how to step through the memories as required. Good luck, and thanks for watching.